Kentucky Campanelli Stadium. Larry Blucher with you. The Rocks trailing the Pioneers one to nothing in between innings. The Rocks mascot KO entertaining the crowd along with Fontella Jones who got out and danced for the crowd. <laughs> it is a retro Tuesday. They are uh, doing a bell-bottom blues night, a tribute to the old disco era. <laughs> Fontella got out and showed some moves in between it. Now, I must admit, I have never found sports mascots to be particularly amusing. To me, they just look like someone in a costume running around acting silly, distracting fans from the game that they had paid to see. Well, that was not the case with the Brockton Rocks mascot, K.O. K.O. as in knockout, little boxing analogy, you get it. This was the most amusing, entertaining mascot that I have ever seen at any level of sports. And K.O. became a huge part of the fun at Campanelli Stadium. Anyone who has ever had the misfortune of wearing a mascot costume knows that they are usually stifling hot. <laughs> they smell awful. They have limited visibility, so it's easy to trip over the kids who are always coming up running to hug your legs. And the adults often behave worse than the kids around mascots. You have to exaggerate your body movements and keep in mind that the fans cannot see your facial expressions. Because the mascot's facial expression never changes. But K.O. was an exception. You would swear K.O. had many facial expressions because the entertainer inside the costume, Kelly Frank, was so incredibly talented she brought K.O. to life, and she was hilarious. The fans absolutely loved her. I wish I had some great anecdotes to share, but I interacted very little with Kelly, unfortunately. During the games, I was up in the booth, and she was on the field or in the crowd, and I rarely saw her before and after the games. She was so good at what she did that she wound up becoming the mascot for the Tampa Bay Devil Rays and Tampa Bay Lightning. So you could argue that of all the Brockton Rocks players or front office, her career was the most successful. The fans packing Campanelli Stadium for the final home series of the 2003 regular season would not only be entertained by KO, but would be treated to a matchup of two teams battling down to the wire for the final playoff spot. Now, I don't know if it was the pressure of the situation or what, but the opening game <laughs> would be one of the sloppiest contests that I have ever witnessed. <laughs> Judy Garcia and Lauren Penny performing the anthem and God Bless America. Welcome once again to Campanelli Stadium. They're starting to file in late arriving crowd as it usually is on Tuesday nights. The folks that are coming in here looking forward to the start of a very exciting series between the Rocks and the Elmira Pioneers. Both of these teams really needing to have big series here. A sweep by either team could be devastating to the other team. And it brings up Jake Daubert, who has probably been the hottest hitter in the entire league for the past three weeks. He has an 11-game hitting streak coming into this ballgame, during which time he's had 20 hits in 38 at-bats. Mendoza working from the stretch, the 1-2 pitch, swung on line into center field, coming on his web, it drops in front of him for a base hit. Dover drives home tour as the Rocks have tied the game at 1-1, one one, and Dover has extended his hitting streak to 12 games. Bustos at second base with the leadoff double. Lately trying to move him along. The count is full. Payoff pitch on the way. Misses way up high, gets away from Jones, and Bustos will advance to third base. So Blakely draws the walk, but on the wild pitch, it is Bustos moving over to third. Mendoza rocks and fires. Lewis hits a drive into left field. A broken bat single will score Bustos. Blakely's not stopping. Headed for third base. Here comes no throw by Alvarez because he bobbled the ball. So Lewis picks up a run batted in. He's at first base with a single. And Blakely over to third. 
two to two ball game. Francisco Montos at the plate now. Singled his first time up. And the first pitch to Montos. Swung on ground ball shortstop. Davidson bobbles the ball. Can't pick it up. Everybody's safe. And the Rocks have taken a three to two lead. Now the 1-1. One -one. Torres lays down a bunt. Mendoza off the mound, throws to third base, and it gets away from Abreu. Hustling home is Lewis. Matos to third, and Torres safe at second. The Pioneers are simply self-destructing. It is now 4-2. to two. Regardless, we're not going to see as many errors tonight as we did last <laughs> night, more than likely. There's only one on the board. That is uh, by Elmira. We had nine last night. Five by the Pioneers, four by the Rocks. It was brutal. Martin has fallen behind Davidson, 3-1. and one. The left-hander comes set. A look at the runner at first. Now the 3-1 pitch. Lined at third and passed Mike Davis into left field. Rounding second, headed for third, is Webb. And the ball gets past Lewis and rolls all the way to the wall. A run will score. It is now 3 to nothing as Lewis, playing only his third game of the season in left field, had one scoot past him. And it brings up Denny Abreu. Nobody on base, two outs. Abreu's 0 for 2. He is grounded out twice, once into a double play. First pitch to the right-hander, grounded to third base, off of the glove of Davis. Well, maybe we will get those errors like we did last night. Well, welcome back to Campanelli Stadium on this, the birthday to both Mother Teresa and Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> I never thought I'd ever hear a sentence where Pee Wee Herman and Mother Teresa were mentioned. <laughs> That's strange, isn't it? Pee Wee Herman, of course, uh, real name Paul Rubens. And Mother Teresa's real name, for those of you who are keeping score, Agnes Gonsha Bojakswai, I believe. Probably Bless you. Miss Gray, thank you. Thank you very little. <laughs> Fun is good, and winning is fun, and everybody seemed to be having a blast. Splitting the first two games of that series meant that neither team could clinch a playoff spot during this series. However, with only five games left to play, Elmira was now only two losses away from being eliminated, and the Rocks would have plenty of motivation and inspiration to cut that to one, as Campanelli Stadium would be packed for Fan Appreciation Night. Please welcome Charlie and Claudia Ross. Charlie and Claudia Rocks are throwing out the first pitch, and how appropriate is that? <laughs> Their last name is actually R-O-X. This is not a joke. Charlie's throw is a little off the mark. Claudia's pretty nice pitch. But that, isn't that outstanding that uh, two of the biggest rock supporters have the last name R-O-X? And I think it's great that they were uh, brought out to uh, throw out the first pitch for tonight's ball game. <laughs> Andrea Bates and a... Uh, Cast of thousands here at Campanelli Stadium. A huge crowd, and you can just feel the excitement. There's a lot of love going on out here at this ballpark. With the Brockton Rocks and the best fans in the Northeast League. I mean, this has just been an outstanding marriage. So the count now full to Mike Davis, and the Rocks have a runner in scoring position. Payoff pitch. Swung on, ground ball, shortstop. Abreu up with it. Throws to third base and throws it away. Nestor Smith will score on the play as the throw winds up in the dugout, and the Rocks have tied this ball game one to one. Dalbert has a 13-game hitting streak coming into this ball game. He is 0 for 1, however, tonight. 1-1 one -one pitch, swung on, base hit. Jake Dalbert make it 14 consecutive games. Tony Stutz in relief of Joey Baker, who had his best performance in quite some time. Seven innings allowed only four hits and departs with a 3-2 to two lead. And I am being joined in the broadcast booth by Tom Whaley. Hey, Larry. How, how are you? Good I'm, to I'm see you. I'm great. So you're sticking around for a yeah, I'm gonna stay, playoff? Yeah, I'm going to stay. So we're going to go, I think, over to North Shore tomorrow night and check out the game. So you're going up to, uh, 
to North Shore rather than make oh, I'm sorry, but it's Paul, you're my talking about. Okay, I'm not gotcha. sure. There's no, won't be anybody at North Shore. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to give you a heads up. Just me. <laughs> Will someone send the beer vendor, please? <laughs> He's on call. And the fan goes wild. That's right. <laughs> what a fantastic crowd tonight. Man, it's jumping down there. I, I, you can't make, it's hard to make your way through the concourse. This is nothing but a big old block party where a baseball game broke out. It's wonderful. The Rocks treated the festive crowd to a 3-2 win, and by taking two out of three from Elmira, they would now head to Pittsfield for their final series of the season. So close to earning a playoff spot that the champagne was already on ice. Be sure to click the subscribe button to follow my wild and wacky journey with the Brockton Rocks, because more episodes are on the way. Thanks for watching.